All right, so we're talking about a righteous revolution here on Tack Room Devotional. I'm Keith Brown. We found out yesterday what righteousness means. It means that we can stand before Almighty God without shame, without guilt. How is that possible? Because we've all sinned. It's because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So now we can come boldly. Hebrews tells us we can come boldly before his throne of grace in time of need to obtain mercy and grace. Isn't that awesome? You don't have to come looking at your sin. You can come looking at your righteousness. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34, I believe it is, it says, Awake to righteousness and sin not. I need to awake to this right standing in God. I need to awake to my position in Him. I need to awake to the ability to, that I can stand in the presence of God, not because of me, but because of my Savior, my Lord, my King, my Master. Because of Him, my big brother, because of Him, I can come boldly and stand in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Romans chapter 5 verse 17 tells us that we have been given the gift of right, righteousness. We have been given the gift of the ability to stand in the presence of God. In Romans chapter 14 verse 17 it says that righteousness is the kingdom of God. Remember we talked about that last week. It says that um, um, the kingdom of God is... is uh, um, Joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is joy and peace and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's a spiritual thing. Sometimes we can't wrap our heads around these things. Why? Because they're supernatural. This is what God has done for us. We don't deserve it. But praise the Lord, he's done it for us. Amen. We cannot function as Christians until we have a biblical understanding of what it means to be righteous sons and daughters of, God's, of God. We need to establish the authority that we have in him. Did you hear what I said? We need to establish the authority that we have in him. And the only way you and I can establish that authority is by using it. You see, we can take a young police officer and hang a badge on him. And tell him, hey, you're now a police officer, but if every time he goes out on the beat, he goes and cowards and hides someplace and never um, enforces the law, he's worthless. Well, it's the same thing for us. We have been given this authority. In fact, in Luke chapter 10, it tells us, Jesus says, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy. <laughs> oh my gosh. In, uh, in the Great Commission, um, Matthew chapter 28, it tells us, Jesus says, All power and authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Now you go and in my name do the things that I tell you to do. So we have this authority, but we need to establish it. We need to begin to use it. We need to begin to exercise it. We need to activate it. Amen? To stand in the presence of God without guilt or shame is not pride or arrogance. No, it actually is very humbling to know that I have the right to stand before Almighty God. We are the righteous revolution, and we cannot lose our momentum. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the, uh, the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Please hear this. I got to read it again. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. See, he comes to the righteous. He expects us to do things uh, for, for him on the earth. And he holds us accountable. Holds us responsible. And his ears are open to our prayers. Amen. Let's pick this up again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.